cousin. Let's try it. It's nearly impossible to separate yourself from the things you already know and love about Star Wars. It's been around for so long that the characters and stories have dug their roots deep into your brain and heart. And while you try to judge action figures as objectively as possible, it's hard not to look at a Greedo figure and think, this is a really great figure, but it's Greedo, and Greedo can't be a great figure because he's Greedo. And how do you objectively weigh the use of cloth goods on one figure over killer paint apps on another when the first is Obi-Wan Kenobi and the second is Boba Fett? Leave that to me. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and these are the 10 best Star Wars Black Series action figures. <laughs> Number 10, it's Kanan Jarrus. Since day one, the Black Series has been about recreating actor likenesses and the costumes and props from the films as accurately as possible. So it was a surprise to see characters start to show up that have only existed as animation. Kanan Jarrus and Ahsoka Tano were a breath of fresh air after The Force Awakens had understandably been the focus of four consecutive waves. While either figure could have taken this slot, the edge goes to Kanan's two-part lightsaber and the ability to attach it to his belt, a detail that seemed like it no longer had a place in the line after three years of diminishing value for your 20 bucks. Number nine is the Wampa. Another unexpected surprise, the Wampa was part of a two-pack with Hoth Luke Skywalker. He's a piece that, in any other line, would have been a Build-A-Figure due to his size. The Wampa, I mean. Luke is regular size. He's got a cleverly layered, articulated torso, a removable arm, and absolutely no business existing considering how many important, dialogue-delivering characters still haven't been released. Number eight is 2016 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Obi-Wan Kenobi. Based on the original Obi-Wan, the Alec Guinness portrayed Obi-Wan from the first Star Wars movie, you know, the one called Star Wars. He raised the bar for accessories with a tiny little light-up holographic Princess Leia on a table that plays like four minutes of audio from the movie. A good likeness, a decent cloth goods robe, and a darn shame that it'll be re-released without the talking table for anyone and everyone who wasn't fortunate enough to get this exclusive. Number seven, 2016 San Diego Comic-Con Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren was good enough when he was released in the first wave of Force Awakens figures, and even better when a few running changes were made to the length of his robe and the texture on his scarf, but you can't beat the presentation that was put together for the 2016 SDCC exclusive. Packed with his lightsaber, a regular Kylo Ren masked head, as well as an unmasked version, the mangled Darth Vader helmet, and a First Order banner, this set delivers the ultimate version of a character that will be driving the series for at least two more movies, I assume. And while they will be gouging you for another 20 bucks by re-releasing the Kylo Ren figure you already have with this same unmasked head, as of September 2016, this set is the only place you can get the mangled Vader helmet and the First Order banner. Number six, Luke Skywalker in X-Wing gear. It's the figure that sold the line. It's the first Black Series figure that Hasbro ever released a picture of. It's the first collector-targeted, highly detailed six-inch Star Wars action figure ever made, and to date, it is still the best likeness in the Black Series of Luke Skywalker and the best and only six-inch version of Luke and his X-Wing flight gear from any six-inch Star Wars figure line, domestic or imported. Three years old and it can hold its own with any and all of the import Luke figures on the market, especially if you keep the helmet on. This is what peaking too early looks like. Number five is Bosk. Bosk is a great example of what happens when you put too much emphasis on getting the look of the character right and forget to make him posable as well. That said, man, he looks so good. The sculpt looks great. The straps look great. The paint looks great. His scales look great. It's the kind of figure that makes you crazy because it proves that this kind of quality can be delivered at this price point. Number four is Darth Maul. Another figure released in the very first wave, Darth Maul tees collectors with accessories. Sith binoculars, lightsaber that splits in half with removable blades, and two different heads, one of which has an entire robe attached to it so they could get the look of the fabric resting on his crown of horns just right. If this figure were released today, it would come with one head and a fabric robe and the lightsaber but no binoculars, nothing else, just like Kylo Ren and Darth Vader. Number three is the Biker Scout. The first attempt to do a vehicle in the Black Series and Hasbro absolutely nailed it. The Biker Scout and the Speeder Bike, while historically not always sold together, belong together. The details make this figure from his boot holster and tread design to the texture of his straps and the pads connecting his double jointed elbows. He's dirty, his bike looks used, and is perfectly in scale. And not for nothing, but it's my personal favorite trooper design, so thanks for that, Hasby. I owe you one. Number two is Boba Fett. While it is the same mold for all three Fett figures, let's be clear, this number two spot is for the regular, non-exclusive, mass retail version. The Walgreens exclusive white prototype is just a repaint, and they didn't even fill in the dent in his helmet. 
And the 2013 SDCC exclusive version with the still exclusive Han and Carbonite that is still out of my price range and getting further away with each passing day is literally the worst thing that has ever been released as part of a Star Wars line. Seriously though, I can't believe they haven't repacked that Han and Carbonite somewhere. Greedo has had two different releases, but not Han and Carbonite? They could have packed him with Leia as Bausch. Boosh. Fett has some limited posability due to... You know what? No, I'm not going to try and point out any flaws in this figure. It's number two. It's Boba Fett. It's incredible. If you want to know why it's such a great figure, just look at it and then give it a helmet nod. And at number one is the Stormtrooper. All of them. Sand Trooper, Sergeant, Shadow Squadron, Shock Trooper, Crimson, Han, and Luke. The Sand Trooper was released in the very first wave in 2013 and is still the best figure ever released. Or rather, it was built using the same basic mold. Obviously, they had to design the Stormtrooper first and then apply the backpack, the heavy blaster, the orange shoulder pad, and the grime all over the armor, but it started with the Stormtrooper design. Unlike the other figures in that wave and nearly every figure since, it had double-jointed knees and elbows. His head and torso both have a realistic range of movement. He has one wrist that pivots vertically and one that pivots horizontally. You can switch around the shoulder pads, the backpack, exchange guns, army build, and beyond every other figure in the line, even more than X-Wing Luke, the Stormtrooper looks just as good as, and is way more wallet-friendly than, imports like SH Figuarts, Arts, Revoltech, or Bandai. And hey, if you have one or more in your collection, you've already got to jump on your dis... <coughs> wow. <laughs> that was a weird yeah, one. Let's not put that in. And hey, if you have one or more in your collection, you've already got to jump on your display and figure photography for Rogue One. Those are the 10 best Star Wars The Black Series action figures, a list that went through 37 different drafts before I settled on version 16C, but I can 100% guarantee that I have the correct 10 figures and the correct order. Guarantee not valid after September 29, 2016. It sucks because this is going to go out the same, uh, what, the week after? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hey, while you're here, help yourself to the subscribe button. If you're not yet subscribed, we just had it cleaned and tuned up. If you already are a subscriber, perhaps I can show you something in a share. Twitter, Tumblr, maybe Facebook. Hit the like button and take a stroll through the comments section. Let us know if we got it right or like really right. And I'm sorry I had to leave IG-88 off the list. I didn't want my bounty hunter bias to creep in. He would have been number 12 right after Ahsoka, but just ahead of Leia's Bausch. Boosh. <laughs> Good, good, good.